There's a great connected with the name Glenn Gould. Partly this is due to the overwhelming success he's had with his recording of Bach Goldberg's Variations. Life magazine came out with a big article showing pictures of a slim, rather untidily dressed young man, sitting hunched over the piano, refusing to shake hands with however famous a personality. Actually, when you meet Glenn Gould, he's very different from all the publicity things written about him. He's rather shy. His mannerism tells you that he may be nervous, which of course is true. He's one of the most highly strung young artists in front of the public today. Glenn Gould, as you talk to him about his playing the piano, always stresses one point, that he wants to write music rather than play it. Several musicians have told me that for some quite unpredictable reason, this amazingly successful pianist is afraid of the piano as an instrument. In his unconscious mind, there seems to be some sort of an idea that he might hurt his hands while actually playing the piano. By this and by this had his career cut short. The other reason for his not being satisfied as a performing artist are his very great intellectual powers. People who knew Glenn when he was around 12 years old say that his intelligence then was almost frightening. There are very definite rules as far as the interpretation of music goes. And Glenn Gould may feel that these rules, despite the fact that they allow for creativity, are still binding him too closely to another man's thoughts and work. He's cutting down his concert appearances quite considerably, and he's found quite a good way to do this. As he is not only a magnificent pianist, but also somewhat interesting to watch on stage because of his various antics like singing, stamping his feet, the crouched position over the piano, the very low stool, which is most unusual, and the raised piano, all this adds up to a tremendous box office. Therefore, Glenn Gould doesn't have to refuse any engagements. He and his manager simply agree to raise his fee, and by that he can cut down his very heavy concert schedule and devote himself more to writing music, which is what he really wants to do. His string quartet had several successful performances and will be recorded this spring. At times, Glenn also feels that he would like to become a conductor. Of course, he's still so young that one never knows which, will, which way will he develop. Personally, I believe he will never give up playing the piano. I always like to meet Glenn Gould, because once you have penetrated his shyness, which he hides under certain mannerism, it is most interesting to talk to this man. And strangely enough, after a few minutes, there seems to emanate from him a feeling of peace which is something of a surprise, because at the very first minute you think he might be a little flippant, which he's not at all. The interview with him, which you are going to hear, was recorded about two years ago. He repeated many of the points made in it later in one which was filmed and you might have seen on television. What was amusing, that after I'd finished the interview, he said to me, uh, you never asked me anything about my uh, mannerisms because the article in Life had just appeared. I looked at him and said, Mr. Gould, I don't know you well enough for that. He roared with laughter, and then with a little twinkle said, well, in a way, it all helps. The young man sitting opposite me today came to Montreal about two years ago to give a recital, and people who knew him or knew of him were very angry to see rather few people in Plateau Hall. Then he made one record, and almost at the same time his New York debut. And today, people who want to engage him have to go about two years ahead. It was one of the most startling leaps to the very top in recent musical history. What I like to find out during this talk is, did Glenn Gould expect anything like what happened to him? Good afternoon, Mr. Gould. How are it's, you? Um, okay. It's rather a shame that this time you're only passing through Montreal and we won't have a chance to hear you. Well, it's nice to be here for a visit anyway, you know. Yeah. Tell me, um, when you studied, or during your studies, um, what did you actually expect would sort of happen? Well, I think that um, anyone who decides to try and make a career in music expects that uh, something like this would happen yes. at one point. And then there are the pessimistic years when you expect nothing at all, you know. Um, I must say that, that uh, it has come as a bit of a surprise to me in the last couple of years, it, it's been rather exciting, actually, what has happened. And it's been very, very fast, hasn't it? Yes, I mean, yes. 
tell me, Mr. Gould, when did you study to start the, um, uh, to study the piano? Well, I began to study the piano when I was very small, so three or four years old, not seriously, of course. Yes. And uh, became quite serious about it in my early teens, so 11 or 12, perhaps. And uh, then, after I was 19, I stopped studying formally altogether, and then the work really began, you know. Yes, and who did you study with? Well, my first teacher was my mother, and after that I studied in Toronto with Alberto Carrero. And that has been that your has only been, teacher? Yes. 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 Um, and then your first concert was given in Toronto? Okay. Well, my formal debut was in Toronto when I was um, 13 with the orchestra. Yes. Uh, I, of course, had played it in student recitals, that sort of thing, before that. And how many concerts would you say you give now in a year? Well, actually, I am trying to um, work something a little special as far as a tour is concerned, because I have a few other things I would like to do besides playing the piano. And one of them is to compose. And I find that when you are mm. traveling, regardless of how much time you may have sitting on trains and sitting in hotel rooms, it's an idea of concentration. You simply cannot get at something else. There's only one sphere in which you can be directed at one time, you know? So, um, next season, I'm hoping to limit myself to 25 concerts. In fact, I am doing it. For the year? For the entire yes. year, yes. And uh, this will be concerts in most of the major cities in the United States and two or three in Canada. And, uh, and that is it for the entire year. And then do some recording. And it leaves me with about seven months free for composition, which yes. is a dream, really, you know? That's really your dream, yes. uh, what is closest to your heart. Well, it is, it is the sort of tour I've been working for for a long time. Until now, it has not been practical to do anything except play over maybe nine months of the year. Yes. But um, I hope two or three years hence to have it even more compact, maybe about three months kind of thing. <laughs> Would you ever give it up completely? Could you visualize that? Well, I can never visualize giving it up as far as my own amusement is concerned. I, I can't but imagine not playing. Professionally, it's hard to say. I could imagine doing so. Yes. yes. Quite willingly. Is actually the okay. rumor true? Some people say you would uh, like to become a conductor. Well, That's actually, true. yes, I would. As a matter of fact, I'm. Uh, I have one engagement to conduct next season. I can't tell you where at the moment because it's not quite official. But uh, maybe in a couple of weeks. I can. Yes. It's a secret, though. So yes. 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 Would it be a full orchestra? Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Have you studied conducting, or is that more? Well, like my studies of conducting have been entirely um, done at times when I'm playing concertos and trying to figure out some uniformity in the manner of other conductors, which I cannot do. <laughs> yes, tell me, Mr. Gould, what will the summer will be your first tour to Europe, and where will you actually go to, and what will happen? Well, I'm really playing very few concerts in Europe. I'm doing um, three concerts with Herbert von Karajan, the Berlin Philharmonic, and I'm in Berlin, do you in Berlin. the Berlin Festival. No, that's um, just, I think, in the regular subscription series oh, in Berlin. And then I'm playing at the Vienna Festival. But the most uh, exciting thing for me, certainly, is uh, I'm doing six concerts in Russia. And you will be the first pianist from this side of the ocean to go to I Russia, think so, aren't yes. you? Mm -hmm. And that is with the full government support, is it? It's with our government support, definitely. Yes. Mm -hmm. And where will you be going to in Russia? Well, actually, just Moscow and Leningrad, the... Um, idea there seems to be to do several concerts in each city. I'm doing two recitals and um, a concerto concert in each case. <coughs> the concerto concert is rather interesting because their whole approach to it is quite different from over here. I sent them a list of about a dozen concertos yes. and underlined three, which I would most like to do. Beethoven and the, and the three which I underlined were the second and the fourth Beethoven and the B minor Bach. And they wrote back to my agent and said, uh, well, this list is quite satisfactory, but would you want to play the same three concertos the second night? No. Well, I think we should hope this never becomes the fashion <laughs> over here. <laughs> Could a pianist actually do it? Well, Very I'm going hard. to do it. I'm going to do it. You have to do all three in one evening. Actually, yes, because apparently, um, I think Gillel did that when he came to America. It, it's yes. quite the fashion over there. They, they have um, a sort of curtain raiser in the orchestra, and then the soloist does the rest of the work. Because That's by and large, apparently, the orchestral programs in Russia are um, without soloists. And when they so it's use a sensation someone. if that right. soloist comes, that's and right. he really that's has right. to give them yes. everything he's got to give. But it'll be an exhausting evening, I shudder to it think of it. It must be, yeah. yes. Now, Mr. Gould, I'd like to ask you a question about your last um, concert in New York. Eric McLean reported that Aaron Copeland afterwards came to see you in the green room, and he said, you know, congratulated you and so on. And then he said, you play more like a composer than a pianist. Now, I didn't understand why um, Mr. McCain would report that so much. It's not to be an interpretive artist, just as great an art as if you're a composer. I mean, would you 
understand the work better or what? Well, um, first of all, you have to remember that the remark in context came from a composer. Yes. And um, it is rather like um, someone who is a taxi driver telling you you um, handle a car beautifully, you know. Um, as such, it is a very valuable compliment because it does come from a composer. Mm -hmm. But in my own opinion, um, it would be a compliment uh, coming either way, coming from an interpretive artist or from a composer. For one thing, I don't like to draw a clear-cut distinction between these two right, things, you I know? Mean, it is very difficult to say. I personally um, cannot recall ever having heard any composer who played in a particularly sensitive manner, which is one thing against it. Or played with uh, well, own no, work well. Well, let, no, let's put it, let's make an exception, like Manonoff yes. did, I forgot about that. But okay. mostly they don't play no, their own work No, that is well true. At all, do they? But I think that um, the one thing that possibly escapes notice is that composers in private have a completely different conception. M many composers don't have the ability somehow to project in public, yes, you know? Yes. But I have heard many composers play me their own work uh, in their studio, and this is something quite different. I mean, it is um, by and large a sort of symphonic conception. And why I am very uh, pleased with Mr. Copeland's remark is that, to me, there is a sort of um, integrity of this idea of a composer uh, playing completely without regard to the limitations of, of physique, the yes, limitations of an instrument, yes. you know? And that is why I, I think uh, why the you work was valuable yes. and why I was thinking. But actually, an interpretive artist would be just as unaware of his own personality as a composer when he does something, wouldn't he? Should be. Let's should be. That Is that not true? Well, they should be. I, yes. I'm just wondering statistically how many really are, if, if it is really completely possible to be. Completely unaware of your yes. own personality. Yes. Maybe then it would get too factual. Well, uh, that would seem to be what happens um, when many, as I say, when many composers play their own music. Yes, yes. Uh, very difficult subject. Tell me, would you say that you can express your own personality more honestly in your own composition than by playing the works of great masters? Oh, that's, that's very difficult. I really am not a musical metaphysician, you know. But, um, well, I suppose so, because if I followed through the argument that I made a moment ago, uh, in that ideally one uh, somehow sublimates your own personality to that of yes. the composer when you are reproducing something, um, then yes, I would I think it's, it's therefore say follows logically yes. that you can do And so. when you do compose, you wish to mostly compose for the piano or... And, well, strangely yourself? enough, I've never composed anything for the piano yet. I'm working on a piano piece now for the first time. You except some cadenzas to the Beethoven. Yes, yes. yes. And, and other chamber music, but nothing for the piano up till now. Now I'm working on something. I see. Are you yourself very fond of playing chamber music? Yes, I am. I, I have not done very much of it because I haven't really had that much time in the last few years, but I am very fond of it. I'm not a particularly good chamber musician because I have a very bad habit of acting like a conductor, you know. Yes. And this uh, endears me to none of my colleagues, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, you can't. You have to completely melt That's into true. a That's true. quartet or quintet or Take whatever. Take years of, of yes. uh, getting used to them. So. Now, Mr. Gould, can you tell the um, Montreal listeners a little bit how about your private life? You still live at home, or...? Yes, I still live at home. Uh, my home is in Toronto. Actually, this season, I have been um, living in the country, about 100 miles north of Toronto, yes. where my family have had a um, place for some years which is, <coughs> pardon me, completely winterized. And uh, so I have decided that since I'm in cities so much of the time, I'm going to get away from cities altogether when I am home, which is not... Again, the question of composing, real rest yes. and not to see people. And um, one thing that I have discovered this year is that I have a much better perspective on my own work when I sort of hibernate for a few days between trips. You know? yes. Apart from the fact that you can work much better, I have a, quite a decent piano up there. And uh, it's been quite an idyllic existence so far this season. No one thought I would stick it after the first snow, but I'm still there. Very good. Mm. Uh, tell me, how do you like making records? You mentioned before that you will limit yourself to about 25 concerts and that you will also make some records. Oh, yes. Well, I, I wouldn't want to give that up because, for one thing, I'm very fond of making records. It is the closest thing that we can do on the piano to actually constructing something, putting something together. Not um, piecemeal, but putting something together with complete volition. I mean, what you want, you can achieve, if only by doing it 20 times until you get it. You yes. Know? No, actually, and you can hear yourself yes, on the tape and say, oh, this right. I have to That's do right. differently also. I don't find making records a great strain that, that uh, it seems to be for some people. Actually, I, I must say I enjoy it possibly more than, than giving concerts. 
you do mm -hmm. because you don't have the public and as you say you can work and work at That's the right. same thing again That's right. now does the recording company allow you to choose what you want to record or do they come and it's it's by compromise really yes. um <coughs> i think that we both have a sort of right of veto but um, we don't use it, you know, because then there would be no more meetings of the General Assembly, and that would be very unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> they first make you a proposal, that's and right, then you that's kind right. of consider it. That's and, right. um, yeah. mm -hmm. Actually, I have been uh, very lucky. I've done so far just the things I wanted to do. I have another recording coming out of Bach at the moment, and I'm making two concertos in April. The two Beethoven concertos? No, I'm doing the second Beethoven and the B minor Bach. Being sort of in advance of the Russian tour, what? Yes, this is what I'm Mr. Gould, tell me, is your family, um, are they very happy about what happened to you? or? Well, yes, I think that they are. Um, my father, I know, during my school years, had certain doubts about the uh, reason of, of being a concert musician. I think he would have much preferred that, that uh, I become a sort of institutional person, you know, and, and he saw me rather as... A teacher? As, yeah, not necessarily as a teacher. No, I think he really... Uh, thought I should concentrate on musicology, which in fact uh, was uh, at one point my intention in any case. Yes. And, uh, but just as, a, as for practical considerations, he thought this was more reasonable. I think that this is uh, the usual parental consideration, you know. And of course, once you start really and things begin to happen, it doesn't really matter what people think, you just have to go on. That's right. Is yes, that quite so. Yeah. Well, I look forward to your next concert in Montreal, which I understand will be next autumn. Is it next autumn? I thought it was next spring. I'm not oh. sure. I'm not sure. Whenever it will be. Anyway, I look forward to it too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.